At the center, a dad who found himself doing everything he could to save his struggling son. A dad, it turns out, who knows a lot about that industry. Kate Snow reports from New Jersey. This is 10-year-old Andrew Francesco, racing down the hill near his New Jersey home on a snowboard he got for Christmas. His dad, Stephen, cheering him on. All right, that was good. This is it. He wanted to show me the exact spot. What do you think of when you look at that? I just couldn't believe it. I was so proud of him. That's my son. That's my son. It was a rare moment of joy for Stephen and Andrew. Most days weren't like that. Andrew had been struggling with behavioral problems since preschool, as loving and goofy as he could be. It's what I do. <laughs> He could also be impulsive, disruptive, sometimes exploding with rage. I mean, I'm passing this park right here. We had a huge fight there once. There were times when he was just impossible. Diagnosed with ADHD in kindergarten, Andrew spent a lot of time riding in the car with his parents to doctor's appointments and pharmacies. And would walk in and walk out hoping we had an answer. I have a list here. How many drugs was Andrew on over the next few years? The astonishing thing about this list is this is nine years of his life. He has at least a dozen different drugs. Did you get to a point where you just didn't want to make any more decisions about medicine? Oh, God. You know, anybody who's had children who have mental health problems knows how challenging and demanding it is. And over time, you just get worn down. When he turned 14, Andrew's doctors gave him a new diagnosis, obsessive compulsive disorder and Tourette's syndrome, and a new drug, Seroquel, from a category called atypical antipsychotics. His doctors said it could help manage Andrew's anger. So it's to treat that symptom? Yes. Not psychosis, not he's delusional. Because you hear antipsychotic, you would think it's made for someone who Absolutely. has a real psychosis. A real psychosis. Then one morning in 2009, a year after Andrew had started taking Seroquel in increasingly high doses, Stephen found him in bed, struggling to breathe, and called 911. When everything happened, is this the way you went? Yes, this is the way we went. I was in the back of the ambulance with Andrew. You can start to see the hospital. This is the place where Andrew was born. It's also the place where he died. The place where he died. Yeah, that's why it's so hard. Andrew had died from neuroleptic malignant syndrome, an extremely rare side effect of taking antipsychotics. Even though it was listed on Seroquel's packaging, Stephen said he'd never heard of it before. This was an adverse side effect to taking high doses of Seroquel. As prescribed by a doctor. That's right. After Andrew's death, Stephen was in shock, grieving, but also feeling guilty. He thought he, of all people, should have been able to protect his son. First of all, I want to thank the FDA for allowing me to speak at the forum. Because Stephen uh, Francesco wasn't just a desperate see, parent. Uh, my company, which He is was a also a drug industry States, insider. I have 30 years in the pharmaceutical industry, 21 years with my own company. You rubbed shoulders with executives, all, all with doctors, doctors, with regulators. Absolutely. You are a pharma guy helping sell pharmaceuticals, helping increase access to pharmaceuticals, and your own son yeah. dies of... Side effect. It's the ultimate irony. It's part of what I agonized over when I thought, how could this have happened to me? Stephen started digging and discovered something. His son was one of hundreds of thousands of kids taking drugs that it turns out doctors may not know much about. That antipsychotic, Seroquel, it was not approved by the FDA at that time for kids, only for adults. His doctor had prescribed it off-label. Andrew was, in a sense, a guinea pig. They were testing whether this drug would work on him. But the doctors are allowed to do that. They are. It's so-called off-label. They go That's off right. what the label says and guess that it might help Andrew. That's correct. That's right. And they're hoping. They're hoping.
Stephen found that's true for the vast majority of kids taking antipsychotics. Doctors prescribe them off label to treat anything from aggression to ADHD to eating disorders. And yet, only limited clinical trials have been done on kids to test whether these drugs work for those conditions. About one in every um, 80 or 85 kids are receiving an antipsychotic sometime during the course of the year. Columbia University professor Dr. Mark Olfsen is a leading researcher on the prescription of antipsychotics. He says more and more kids are getting them for unapproved uses. Is it safe? Well, there are some safety concerns with these medications. Many of them result in weight gain. They can increase things like cholesterol. And then there are longer term things that are hard to study. So we know less about the effects of these drugs on the developing brain. Stephen says it all amounts to a vast off label experiment on kids. And he thinks the pharmaceutical industry, his industry, is the one profiting. There's a lot of very aggressive marketing of these drugs to the doctors. Attorney James Pepper says he has the evidence. He represents a former sales rep for AstraZeneca, the maker of Seroquel. She says the company pushed her to pitch unapproved uses of the drug to doctors. That can be against FDA regulations. They looked at the bottom line, Kate. Um, it is all about sales all the time. Pepper showed us what he says is a company report listing doctors his client and other sales reps called on about an extended release Seroquel. Some of them are child psychiatrists. As a sales rep, you're not supposed to pitch drugs off label, right? Correct. But they're sending her to places where those doctors would have to be prescribing off label. That's absolutely correct, Kate. That's absolutely correct. There was no other way for a doctor who treats children to prescribe Seroquel XR except to prescribe it to a child, which was an off label usage. Pepper is representing his client in two whistleblower lawsuits against AstraZeneca. The company denies the allegations and has asked the court to dismiss one of the cases. This isn't the first time AstraZeneca has been accused of improperly marketing Seroquel. In 2010, without admitting any wrongdoing, the company paid a half billion dollar fine after a Department of Justice civil investigation into how it sold Seroquel, including for use in children. AstraZeneca declined to talk to us on camera, but told us it has never pushed its sales reps to market Seroquel off-label. It says it trains its employees to meet or exceed industry standards, comply with the law, and promote medicines in accordance with FDA regulations. Stephen Francesco thinks the FDA is part of the problem. As far as I'm concerned, the FDA, in terms of regulatory activity, uh, is getting weaker. And yet there's huge amounts of medication being poured down kids' throats. Less than a year after Andrew's death, the FDA did approve Seroquel for use in kids with severe conditions, schizophrenia and bipolar mania. But doctors continue to prescribe Seroquel off-label, even to children younger than two. We wanted to ask FDA officials about the off-label prescription of antipsychotics in children and what they're doing to keep kids safe. They would not talk to us on camera, so we've come here right outside Washington, D.C. to a public meeting. Behind these doors, FDA officials are talking about Seroquel and its safety in kids. Let's go inside. We invited Stephen to come along and watch, too. It's strange being here because of what I know about this. Wow, it changed this my life. At the meeting, a routine safety review, an FDA scientist presented data about reported side effects to an advisory panel of independent doctors. This slide lists the reported patients that died. One of the kids I know was a four-year-old. Some doctors had questions about off-label use. Would it bear labeling to state there are no data to support use of this in attention deficit uh, syndrome. In the end, the panel voted to keep monitoring the drug without recommending new studies or new warnings for the label. We just listened to the FDA panel talk about data from 2011 to 2015, safety of Seroquel in kids. Isn't that exactly what they're supposed to be doing? They are well intentioned, but it really isn't enough. Why not? Because after all the discussion that went on, it's status quo. There is no such thing as a drug that is 100% safe, whether it's on label or off label. 
Peter Pitts is a former associate commissioner of the FDA. He says the FDA is doing the best it can to keep kids safe with the powers it has. He says the agency can and does encourage companies to do more trials on kids, but it can't tell doctors how to practice medicine or stop them from prescribing drugs off-label. Stephen Francesco believes that what happened to his son, his son's death, is an indication of a much bigger problem. Do you agree or is he overgeneralizing? Well, clearly the system didn't work for him. It failed for his son. But there are many, many millions of people who are regularly helped through off-label use of products. Pitts and nearly everyone we spoke to for this report, from the FDA to the drug industry to doctors, all agree that more data on kids is needed. We need far more studies that are looking at the effectiveness and safety of these drugs as they're actually being used in the community. If you had to describe the children's mental health industry, how would you describe it in a sentence? I can do it in a word. It's broken. It's broken. Stephen hasn't given up on the industry. He's still a consultant, but he's recently set up a website where he hopes doctors and parents will share information about off label psychiatric drugs. And he's written a book, Over Medicated and Undertreated. It's a difficult read. It's a difficult subject. Did you ever imagine that you would end up here? No. Oh. Across from the hospital where Stephen's son was born and then died, he had one last thing to show me. Oh, I see it. AF. The spot where father and son scratched their initials in wet concrete side by side. <laughs> A lasting mark from happier times. Coming.